Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting spring cardinals and I'm going to be sipping on some chocolate hazelnut tea today. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, fire red, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and then Mars black. And you can certainly switch up those colors as well if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing later, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number eight round synthetic brush, and a number two round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and chalk and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the first step is I'm gonna be doing the first step to my background. We're gonna be doing two steps on the background, so we're just gonna do the first one to start. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a nice kind of neutral grayish type of color, a little bit lighter at the top and a little bit darker at the bottom. So I'm gonna pre-mix myself my neutral gray color. I've already pre-mixed a little bit so you can see where I'm headed with the color. I am gonna be using quite a bit of brown, but I wanna reserve some of my brown for later. So I just took a little bit of my brown and moved it over so I don't, um, so I ensure that I have some for later. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of black paint into some of my brown and then a little bit of white paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, let me turn this so you can see a little bit better. Then I'm gonna um, just kind of spin it around and I'm gonna add my white in it kind of slowly because I know how quickly the white can take over and I don't necessarily want it to go super light. So I want it to just be a nice natural like um, grayish color with a little bit of warmth in it, which is why I'm using the br a, a lot of the brown as the base for it. And this is looking pretty good to me. So somewhere in this vicinity will get me going. And then what I'm gonna do, once I've got my color mixed that I think is gonna work out for me. I'm not gonna wash my brush, but I am going to utilize that dirty brush and pick up some white paint at the same time. I'm gonna start the top of my canvas with that gray and white, and I'm just gonna be applying it in a left to right brush stroke. I'm starting the top of the canvas with both of those colors on my brush so I can have a little bit of a gradient of it being lighter at the top and then it's gonna go into a little bit darker as it comes down. So now I'm just gonna pick up that pre-mixed gray color and then I'm gonna utilize that all the way down the rest of my canvas. So right here, I'm gonna get them to blend in a little bit and if you want, you can certainly, I'm picking up just a little bit more white just so they can blend in a little bit better as they're transitioning down. So if you feel that yours was too, um, too, much of a separating um, line where you could see the both, you could certainly add a little bit of white to your brush just to get them to blend in a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up that gray color 
in order to paint the rest of my canvas. And you can certainly, if you if you need to, you can certainly mix more on the fly like I'm going to do because I don't think that I mixed enough here. So I'm just mixing up a little bit more on the fly. And if you don't get it into the um, a, a perfect color match as you um, make, if you have to make a second batch, that's okay because we're going to be um, painting a lot of other information on top of this. So if that happens to you and you feel like you need to um, make any kind of color shift or it doesn't come out exactly as you had planned, you can certainly just roll with it as you go down that canvas. And then, like I said, we've got lots of information that's gonna be going on top of this. So if it's not exactly the, the same color match, that's okay. And I'm just coming all the way down to the bottom of my canvas and then we will be, once we've got this step done, we will be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So I'm just going all the way across. You could, if you wanted to, you could paint the edges or the sides of your canvas, but I'm just kind of going um, and giving myself a nice, a nice solid kind of representation all the way down to the bottom. You could go a little bit darker down at the bottom too if you wanted to pick up a little bit of black and make it look a little bit even darker down at the bottom. That would be a personal preference on your part, but I'm gonna just kind of stick with this neutral gray, grayish brown color for the bottom of mine. And then I am going to wash and dry if I can get this last little spot in here, wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second step to our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are red, blue, yellow, white, and brown. And what I'm in essence gonna do is pre-mix myself a couple of custom colors and then we're gonna make a nice out of focus background. But before we start the step, I do wanna forewarn you that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find a fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out, whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a three pastel light colors that I'm gonna be using as um, a soft out of focus background for this. You can imagine this to be um, outdoors, out of focus, springtime flower field kind of thing, or you can just do a nice abstract background with complementary colors to your painting, which is kind of a teeter-tottering balance of the two that I'm gonna be doing here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually use my medium brush to pre-mix my colors. I've got, and I've magically done it off camera so you can see where I'm headed. So I have a light yellow that I'm going for. This is it right in through here. How I got to that was I used my yellow. I added a bit of white into it and a touch of brown. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm lightening up my yellow with the white and then I'm using the brown to kind of neutralize it and make it look nice and pastel and soft and natural. So that's where I'm headed with that one, adding a little bit more brown just to make it into the, into the color that I'm looking for and that's pretty good. And then once I've got that done, you're gonna wanna make you know a good amount so you can um, add a few nice size spots in your background. I'm gonna wash and dry my um, medium brush so I can make my next color. So my next color I'm going to make is going to be this soft blue color. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue, I'm going to add a little bit of white to it and a touch of brown to it. So again, I'm lightening it up with my, um, with my white and then I'm utilizing the brown to soften it and give it kind of more of a neutral type of natural base color to it. I think I want a tiny bit more white in there. That's looking pretty good to me. A nice soft kind of um, grayish blue color is where I'm headed with that. And I'm gonna wash and dry my brush again because I'm gonna do a light red color. So I'm gonna do the same process with it. So this is the color I'm headed for. I've got some of, I'll make it over here because my red is over here. So I've got red. I'm gonna add a little bit of white paint to it to make it lighter. And then I'm also gonna add a touch of brown to it to neutralize it. So that's gonna be about the color that I'm headed for, maybe a little bit darker on that one. And then once you've got those three custom colors, I'm gonna put my medium brush away. I'm gonna be utilizing my large brush to get my paint on here. 
So what I'm, I might end up using a little bit of my background color if I need to as well, but what I'm in essence gonna do, I'm picking up some of my yellow paint to start, and I'm gonna be giving myself these large kind of soft, out of focus areas with this, with these custom colors that I've created. So I, I just picked up a little bit more of my yellow and I'm just rubbing it in, scrubbing it in like a nice, soft, out of focus type of um, brush stroke, utilizing that gray in the background. So it ends up merging with that and making it look like it's nice and, and blended in with that. You can also pick up a little bit of white if you want to, like I just picked up a tiny bit of white also if you wanna have some lighter areas incorporated in there. You don't have to do all your yellows at once and all your reds at once and all your blues at once. You can certainly alternate, but I'm gonna start by just doing one color at a time. I'm not going all the way down my canvas. I'm probably gonna come about three quarters of the way down. That way um, I don't really need to do any down at the bottom because we're gonna be filling that area with flowers and birds and all kinds of other stuff. So right now, Without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up some of that light red color that we created. So I have the yellow plus a little bit of the, the light red. I don't need much of this on my brush at all. You can see it, it's pretty darn powerful. So just a little bit and then just kind of scrubbing it into the canvas, maybe a little bit on over in through here. I'm gonna pick up a touch of white paint too so I can maybe get a little bit of this pinky kind of tones up towards the top. And in my head, I'm thinking like the top would be a little bit lighter than down below. So that's why I'm adding a little bit of the white as I go up towards the top. Right now, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue, that custom blue with that we made without washing my brush and just start to incorporate a couple of blue areas in through here. Now blue and yellow will make green. So as you're going through the process, if you detect a little bit of green because your blue and your yellow start to talk to each other, that's okay. It's an outdoor scene. It's okay if you have green. <laughs> so don't worry if, if you've got some green going on. If you want more, you can certainly kind of incorporate those two colors even more together. That's going to be a personal preference on your part. I'm painting over some of the other areas with the with the blue so it all can you know, all can look like it's living together and talking together. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint now just so I can get a couple of lighter areas up towards this top region. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it. Once you feel like you've got enough of these kind of out of focus type of colors up in the upper region of the canvas. If you wanna add more, feel free to add more. Like I think I want a little bit more yellow over in here. So I just picked up a touch more of that custom yellow color. And then I just maybe let it dry for a minute, see if there's any additional bright spots or dark spots that I wanna add. And I would just keep fiddling with it until I am happy. And then once you're all happy with it, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be utilizing our chalk for the next step. So you can finish getting your out of focus background all nice and done in through here. And then once you've got it done, and if you feel that you want to um, go back into your background color, feel free to do so. Right now I'm just kind of alternating my blue, yellow, my custom blue, yellow, um, and red and white, but you could certainly go into your background color if you felt you needed to or wanted to. And then I'm gonna wash and dry this brush if I can ever stop. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll wash and dry this brush, put it away, and get my chalk out in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our birds and our two main flowers down at the bottom. I'm gonna be using my chalk, and again, I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it's much easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So I'm gonna be showing you how to um, make some basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize for our coloring and process during painting. But for the birds, I'm going to be not doing any fine-tuned detail. We're just going to make some nice easy shapes so that way we'll have some good proportion and hopefully they'll be in the shape of cardinals by the time we're done. So I'm going to start with my male cardinal over on the right hand side. He's going to be a little bit taller than the female cardinal. I'm going to start with a circle for the shape of the main part of the body. So what I'm going to do on the right hand side of my canvas is I'm going to find about halfway up 
up or down my canvas, so somewhere right about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel to the left about a quarter of the way over towards the center. So if this is about center of my canvas, I'm about half the way between there and the edge of my canvas. Then I'm going to just make myself a little bit of a marker somewhere in through there. Then I'm going to come straight down from there and I'm going to stop about three inches from the bottom of my canvas, something like that, two to three inches. So this is about I would say five and a half to six inches tall. I'm going to do the same thing for the width so I find myself about the center point and then I'm going to go over to the right about three, three and a half inches and then the same thing over on the left. That gives me my circle barrier and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect these four markers with a big old circle. The circle doesn't even have to be a perfect circle. You just want to make sure that the edges um, are rounded. So you don't want to go diagonally from dot to dot. You just want to make sure that you have those circled edges, something like that. Then I'm going to make another circle for the start of the head. I'm going to have this one crossing over this circle just a little bit in the, in the center area. This one's going to sit pretty center on, on this circle, maybe a little bit to the right. I'm going to come up from here, I would say about two and a half to three inches. I'm going to come into the center, go over about inch and a half to two inches, and then do the same thing here. And that gives me my four barriers for this circle. So something like that will give me my circle. And then what I'm going to do is I've got to um, connect my head to my back in through here. So I'm really just going to come a little bit down from this halfway marker, give myself a little bit of a, a little kind of curvy type of line. doesn't have to have a lot of curve in it, but just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from here about an inch and then get this to connect in through here, something like that. From here, I'm going to make myself a beak. So, or the portion that sticks out from the body. So I'm going to come up from here, maybe about another inch, inch and a half, and then give myself a curved little line like that. And then from here, I'll give myself a little bit of a curve in through there. I'm going to give myself a crown for this bird. So I'm going to start, if this is halfway or the top of my head, I'm going to come to the left of that about an inch. And then I'm just going to give myself this tall kind of just a little bit of an arcing kind of line. You don't want to bring it out past the edge of the head, so just a little bit past the, the center will take you into a fine position. And this is all going to be colored in anyways, but I just leave myself a little ripply edge. That's all I'm going to do for the male. For the female, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give myself a circle, but I'm going to have my circle a little bit lower on the canvas. So if you take from the top of this circle and come over to the left, if this is your um, center left to the right of the canvas, I'm over from that maybe about two, two and a half inches and then down about an inch, something like this. And then I'm going to come down and I will be of equal distance. If this is down from here about an inch, I'm going to be down from that one about a half of an inch to an inch. This circle for her might not be quite as large as that one. This one might be a little bit smaller, but somewhere in this vicinity it will work. Then I find my halfway point from here to here and then I go to the right about three inches and then to the left about three inches or thereabouts. That'll give me my four markers. I'm going to give myself my circle, something like this, to connect all those four markers. And then for the circle for her head, I'm going to have it to the right a little bit so she almost looks like she's leaning in or, you know, starting to have a conversation with the male bird. So I'm going to, again, from here, I'll come down just a little bit to maybe about a half of an inch or so and then over to the right about half of an inch to an inch. Then I'm going to come straight up from that about three, three and a half inches. That'll give me top to bottom. Find the center, go to the right about an inch and a half to two inches and to the left about an inch and a half to two inches. That gives me my four markers and then I go ahead and connect my dots. Something like this will give me my, my circle. And again, doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just something that'll give us um, a good starting point. I'm going to connect the back of the head to the back in through here with just a nice kind of gentle slopey kind of line like that. I'm just going to close off this little um, pointy gap in through here with a tiny bit of a curved line. Then I'm going to give her her beak right in through here. So just above this line I'm going to start the bottom part of the beak. I'm going to go up 
from that, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. And then I'm gonna just kind of curve this down like that and then connect that beak, the pointy part to in through here. Then I'm gonna give her a crown, but her crown is gonna be kind of leaning back a little bit more, whereas his is kind of standing straight up. So I'm gonna be about halfway um, or just right at the top of her head in through here. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring this back in this direction. And then same thing, just kind of give this little ripply type of edge in through here to meet um, to meet the head. And then I'm gonna put my flowers on. So these flowers are meant to represent lotus flowers, which are really big. Um, they've got these big, beautiful petals on them. And I thought it'd be cool if these birds were sitting behind them. So my flower, I'm gonna have one main flower for each of them that's gonna sit in front of them. I'll start with the male one first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of big leaves down at, or petals down at the bottom and then I'll build my petals from the front to the back. So I'm gonna have this big arcing one down in through here. I'll have another one that kind of goes off my canvas. These, I'm gonna have a couple that are gonna overlap my bird. So I'm gonna make one in through here. These are just kind of big, um, uh, round type of leaves then we'll see some from the side so we'll, some of them will look more narrow some of them will look wider and then I'm gonna um, make one coming out over in through here I'm gonna have another one coming I would say about halfway up in through here this isn't this one's gonna kind of uh, go in front of my bird something like that I'll do another little one kind of over in this vicinity, so I'm working, this is my front, these three are my front ones and I'm just working my way back. That makes it a nice easy process to do um, outlines on petals because you don't have to worry about how they overlap. You can just kind of sneak one in, um, in behind. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna take my medium brush with a little bit of water and erase any, oops, that was a little bit of paint on my brush, erase any um, chalk lines that I think might confuse me during the painting process. So I'm really just erasing the lines that are um, part of the body that the petals have started to overlap. So that'll be the way that I keep my brain straight during the painting process. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one over here. So again, I'm gonna do a couple down at the bottom. I think I'm gonna move my canvas so we can see the bottom edge a little bit better. So I'm just gonna kind of come down in through here and maybe this one kind of comes off i'll do another one kind of in through here comes off i'm going to do one main a, a big one in through here like that and then i'm going to have maybe one up in through here and again just kind of working my way working my way back i think i'm going to have this one maybe where is this one going to go we're going to have this one kind of in through here and maybe one here. And yours don't have to be exactly in the same position as mine are. Yours, you can certainly have yours in different positions. They, these are just big and they kind of cup around. So if you feel that you want to use um, a different kind of structure to, to get your flower petals on here, feel free to feel free to do so. I think I want one in through here before I, before I put this um, little one in through here. And then take my wet water on my paintbrush and then just erase any of those chalk marks that are going to confuse me. And then we will be utilizing this medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your outlines for your flowers and your birds on here, you can wash and dry or just get ready with your, put your chalk away, get ready with your medium brush and we'll see you on the next step. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat of our birds. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are red, brown, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be painting my male bird all red. So I don't need to do anything fancy at this point. I just loaded my brush with red paint and I'm gonna color in the entire area. The center area um, can just get a solid coat. When you go towards the edges where it's going to be the exterior of the bird you can if you want to just bring out the um your brush your bristles a little bit that'll make it look like those have little feathery edges to them but outside of that there's really nothing fancy that needs to be done during this um, step i'll do that same action up in the crown as well but the rest of the bird 
can just get a nice solid coat. Even when you're down here by the uh, petals of the flower, you can just paint right around it. We're gonna be doing another layer on the bird. So even if you detect brush strokes that are not going in a perfect direction after you've got this entire step done because you might detect the directional brush stroke on it, it's okay because we're going to be putting lots of little feathers on later. And then again on this exterior edge, just kind of allowing my brush to be soft and feathery along those edges so I can get a nice soft edge um, when it comes to putting those details on. And then again, same thing up in the head. I can just do a nice solid coat until I get to that edge. And if you still have a little bit of chalk left over on the edges, that's okay too. You can erase that with a little bit of water. The only time that I'm gonna be really kind of smooth along the edges is the front part of the face and this crown. So I'm just kind of slowing down a bit to give myself just a little bit of um, control and then I just pull this out so it has a nice fluffy feathery type of edge to it as it's meeting the um, the back of the head and then the beak all go nice and slow so I can have some nice clean lines and that as well so here's the front of the face and then as I go to do the beak just slowing down I like to do um, most of the time a red base for my cardinal beaks because they can come in a lot of different colors from yellows to reds to oranges. So I like to just kind of start them with red and let my highlights and my shadows kind of dictate the, um, the final color of the beak. So I've got that on there. And now I'm going to, before I um, do the main part of my female bird, I am going to utilize red as the main color for her beak as well. So we've got part of the beak already established the shape of it, but I want to bring it into the face a little bit too. So wherever this meets the head right up in through here, I'm going to actually bring this down and back into the face a little bit and then bring it down um, in this area a little bit as well, just to pull that beak a little bit farther into the face because it, the, we'll be doing the same on the male as well when we when we paint his fully, but right now just kind of getting this base coat on here and slowing down right as I'm getting along the edge of her, her beak. And again, if you still have a little bit of that pencil showing, or if you need a smaller brush for this type of area, you can certainly go ahead and grab a smaller brush. I'm going to do a little bit of this red also as a base for her crown. She's going to get um, a couple of different colors in her crown, but right now just going to put a little bit of this as um, as a base coat. And she's also got a couple of little wings that I'm going to have a tiny bit of um, red intermingled a little bit in them. So I'm just kind of putting a teeny tiny bit of red paint over on these edges. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and create a custom color for the rest of her body. So I'm washing and drying my brush. The female cardinals tend to be more of a golden tan type of a color. So that's where I'm headed with a base coat for her. So I've already pre-mixed my color so you can kind of see where I'm headed. And just so you have a visual, this was the gray that we used for the background. So this is gonna be more brownish and with a little bit of yellow in it. So how I got to that was I utilized a little bit of yellow, a good amount of brown, oops, just kind of spilled it a little bit there, good amount of brown and a little bit of white. And I just kind of started spinning it around until I get this really nice neutral tan golden type of color. Yours might end up a little bit browner or a little bit more yellow than mine. It, anything neutral like this will totally work. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color in. Oh, I got some blue paint on her too. That must have been on the bottom of my palette. But we'll just paint that right in. Look, it disappears. <laughs> so, and it's right in the middle of her. So she's just gonna have, she's gonna have a couple extra highlighted or accented colored pieces, but actually it'll just paint right over it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing um, that I did with the male, which is just kind of give a nice solid coat throughout the, um, throughout the entire bird. And then when I get to the edges that I think are going to warrant a little bit of softness to them, I will um, utilize that 
that more feathery type of brush stroke. But again, going right around these these petals with nothing fancy, just kind of getting getting this paint on here. And it may turn out a little bit darker or lighter than you had planned once it dries, and that's okay too because we've got plenty of um, steps to go in order to get the all of those colors to work together and to have some dimension in her feathers and all that good stuff. So. We've got this, I'm going right into her um, neck area, just bringing this color all the way to the edges, something like that, and then doing the entire head as well. When I get on this back side of the head, I'll just pull out that paint a little bit so it's got those little, little bits of the feathery aspect to it, and then I'm gonna have it nice and clean on her head in through here, so I'll slow down so I can have kind of a, a clean line as it goes in through there and then as it meets that beak I'll be a little bit on the cleaner side as well and I'm going to put a little bit of this paint also in her crown so I'm going to just kind of uh, intermingle this with the red that we put on a minute ago so that way we've got a little bit of both colors in through there and then I'm going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and, and if you have any little weird spots of blue paint <laughs> um, anyways you can wash and dry this uh, medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for our flower petals. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are white and that pre-mixed light red that we used for the background. So these flowers tend to have a, a dark concentrated color in the centers of their um, petals or towards the base of the flower and then they're lighter as they go towards the the edges of the flowers. So what I'm going to do is I load my brush with the um, with that light red color and I'm going to start at the base of the petals with that light red and then I pick up a little bit of white and get the top of the petal to be a little bit lighter. So you might find that yours ends up lighter or darker or not, maybe more blended than mine or less blended than mine. Whatever happens is really quite all right because we're one, we're gonna be doing another layer on them and two, these petals can have so many different variations to them so you don't have to worry about a perfect blend. They can almost look kind of stripey within that petal. So again, I'm going to I'm going to move my canvas a little bit too. <laughs> so I can get these bottom couple. So I've got that um the light red. I'm going to start the, you know, a portion of the petal with the light red and then I pick up white without washing my brushes and get those two to kind of blend in, trying to keep that um the reddish color more towards the um the base of that petal and the lighter uh, whiter color more towards the edges of the petal. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect blend. Utilizing the colors at the same time as they're, um, as they're wet on the canvas, that helps to blend them out a little bit. But if you don't get a perfect blend, don't, even, don't really worry about it. So again, just picking up a little bit of that light red and I like to sometimes do multiple you know do a couple of petals at the same time just because I know that my paint will stay um, on the wetter side but if you can only get to you know one one or two at a time that's totally fine I think I'm gonna hit all of these <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling aggressive right now and I just picked up some white paint and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this one to be blended out. And you don't necessarily need a ton of paint. You just want to find a, a rhythm that you can control. So you might find that it, it works best for you to just finish one petal and completely and then move on to the next one. But if you don't get the blend the way that you're, that you're wanting, Again, we're going to have a, another step that will help to enhance the tips of them, make the interiors a little bit darker. Um, so feel free to, you know, let go and not, not worry about it being perfect at this point. Again, I'm not washing my brush throughout the process, so I do have 
both colors on my brush a lot of the time, which allows me to also kind of tap into the wet paint that's in the inside of my bristles and allows me to help um, that blending process. I'll go ahead and do this one in through here. Just picked up some of that light red to um, get the interior and I'm pulling my, my brush out in the direction that I feel the, um, the petal would be kind of um, being pulled out of the center of the flower. And that's gonna give me these directional brush strokes that will tell the viewer what the curve or the form of that um, particular petal is. And that also helps to separate those petals from one another. So if I have this one being curved this way, and then this one's gonna be curved outward, the viewer will definitely know that those are two different um, petals. So that helps to helps to get them to be separated as well. And then I'm just gonna kind of fiddle with it for a second here, and then I'll move on to, to, the, um, to the other flower underneath my female bird, just making sure that I've got all of my petals up to the edges, and you, this is where you can get them to kind of overlap a bit as well. But again, we will have that second step to, um, to the flower, so if you don't get them exactly how you had hoped you would get them at this point, don't worry, you'll have, you'll have that opportunity when we do that second step. So now I'm going to move on to um, this flower in through here. So again, just starting with that, um, with the dark or the, the, the light red color. You can, and you can start anywhere. You could start on the inside petals and work your way out. You could start on the outside petals and work your way in. Wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. I might, when I um, do my second coat for them, I might start with the inside petals just so I can build my way um, on top of them, which sometimes, you know, one on top of the other one, which sometimes makes for an easier building process. But on the first layer here, it's not terribly important as long as you can get um, this initial layer on here with you know with a little bit of a gradient to it great but if you don't get a, a full gradient again that's that's all right too so I'm just kind of spreading this uh, light color out here and again I'm just gonna do the same process to to these petals starting with that the um, light red in that little crook of the the petal and bringing it out in the direction that I feel that that petal kind of um, pulls itself out from the center of the flower. These, these again, these um, flowers are very beautiful with their big, um, with their big petals, but they can come in again all different kinds of colors. So if yours end up lighter than mine or darker than mine, that's that's okay. And then I'm just going to kind of finish up these ones in through here. And you can see I've got mine overlapping the body of my bird. So that's going to make a nice um, fun place for me to stop the bird and kind of hides the bottom of the bird. So we've got, so, you know, that's one of those fun elements that helps to disguise things if we need to as we go through the process. I just loaded my brush with, again, a little bit of that um, light red color and then just a tiny bit of white paint to get the um, to get the edges of that petal. And again, no worries if you don't cover up all of your chalk mark at this point. I'm just going to hit these last few over in through here with my dark or my, I keep, I want to call it dark pink, really, is what I keep stumbling for a, a name for this color, but really it's light red, because I just took red and lightened it up, and then I'm going to put the, um, I picked up some white to get it to um, progressively get lighter towards the edge of those petals, and then just kind of keep working my way through these last few. And this is, you know, this is be the start of getting them to overlap one another, and Again, no worries on finishing them at this point. We'll do another fun step where we'll incorporate some out of focus ones in the background and we'll get um, a little bit more detail on these, um, on these front ones on a future step. And then once you've got this done, we are going to uh, switch brushes to our small brush. So I'm just gonna kind of tidy this up, make sure I've got 
everything painted in as much as I want to. Make sure I've got everything right up to those edges in through there. And then um, I'm going to put this medium brush away, take out my small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some beaks. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, red, yellow, and white. And what I'm in essence, in essence going to do is I'm going to give myself um, a line for where the top and the bottom part of the beaks open up. Uh, the male I'm going to have to kind of give a barrier as to where the beak meets the face and we'll do some highlights and shadows and by the time we're done we'll or by the time we put all these details on they'll look like three-dimensional cute little beaks so what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna um, outline where I want the the exterior of the male beak to be and I'll be putting the openings for both of them so I'm gonna be using brown and black on my brush at the same time and I don't need a lot just a very little bit I don't need these lines to be super invasive just something that's going to give me a little bit of information so where I have the neck meeting the beak in through here I'm actually going to extend this a little bit further into the face and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a line coming up about half a third to halfway up and then I'm going to connect it to this little um, divot up in through here with a little bit of a curved line that's going to give me the beak inside the face a little bit then about midway up or down that beak somewhere in this vicinity I'm going to utilize this spot is going to be the um, the mouth opening and I'm going to meet it to the end of the beak so I just put a tiny bit of water on my dirty brush because I I don't want this to be a very strong line I want it to be nice and kind of faint and I also want it to have a little bit of a curve to it so a little bit of water on my brush is going to help me to kind of control the intensity of this line and if you want it darker after you get it on there you can certainly add a little bit more of the black onto your brush and just get it as dark as you want but I like mine to be kind of on the more faint side so I'm going to do the same thing with the female but we already know how far back her beak is going to go so I'm going to take um, I'm going to go about halfway up or down the beak so somewhere in this vicinity in through here and I'm going to meet the end of the beak with this kind of wavy type of line so not super duper wavy. I think I'm going to put a little bit more water on my brush just so I can control it so a little bit maybe down in through this vicinity and then kind of curve it back up and then meet the the beak portion in through here you can even have a little bit of the front part of the beak um, in front of that line so it looks like it overhangs it a little bit if you wanted to and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start adding my highlights to the top of the beak so I'm going to start with a little bit of white and red on my brush at the same time so not much red at all but some white on there is going to definitely help to get this vibrancy at the top of the beak so white with just a tiny bit of red paint on my brush and I'm bringing this all the way to to the end of the beak I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel right now so I just have a little bit of remnants now I'm picking up a tiny bit of yellow on my brush to get that highlight to start to blend out into the rest of the beak so it turns kind of an orangey type of color you don't have to get yours again to be the same exact color as mine you might find that you want yours to be more yellow or maybe you want yours to be really orange so you could pre-mix an orange color if you wanted to I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight in through here to give it a little bit more dimension as it's um, kind of on the bottom side of that beak I'm going to let this dry for a minute while I go and do the same exercise over on the female's beak so white plus a teeny tiny bit of red on my brush is going to start this highlight at the top of the beak in through here and this is where you definitely want to get rid of any um, chalk or or pencil marks that you might have along the edge so white plus a little bit of red and then I'm going to pick up without washing my brush I'm going to pick up a little bit 
of yellow in order to get this to blend out. I think I need to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. There's a little bit extra white on there. And then that yellow just helps to blend it out. The, you'll be able to see some of that red underneath, which is gonna make it look really nice and natural. I'm gonna put um, a little bit on this upper portion of the bottom uh, part of the beak, so something like this. And I hardly have any paint on my brush right now, just kind of rubbing it out to get a nice blend going. And that's looking pretty good to me. If you wanted to put any shadow at the bottom of the beaks, you can wash and dry your brush and put a little bit of red plus brown on your brush. This will give you a tiny bit of a shadowy area at the bottom of the beak. So if that's something that interests you, your beak might be dark enough right now that you don't feel that you want that. Um, but if you did want a little bit of shadow at the bottom, just brown plus a tiny bit of um, red on your brush will give you that shadow at the bottom of, of the beak. And you could even go black too, depending on how, how dark you wanted it to be. Just making sure I've got a nice um, blend in there. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and put a nice bright highlight on the top of those beaks. So the lightness that we put is um, kind of nice and settled and dried a little bit. Now I'm gonna put some white paint on my brush. This does not just have to go at the edge of the um, beak. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, it a little bit in through here and then just kind of pull it back um, down that beak a little bit. So the, uh, the highlight, because I'm blending it down the side of the beak, that's gonna tell the viewer that the beak has some roundness to it and that uh, the top part is definitely catching the most from the sun, but the side of the bee can also catch some stuff too. So I'm gonna, I just put a little bit more white on my brush to get the tip of this beak. I think I'm gonna, I picked up a little bit of yellow to get a little bit of a yellow hue going at the tip of the beak in through here. And then I just keep fiddling with it until I feel like I've got it as bright as I want it. Um, if I needed or wanted to bring back any of the red, I certainly would, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the, lady, the lady's beak now. So I just put some more white on my brush to start this bright, bright highlight on the top. So I'm kind of starting mid beak in through here, and then I'll just get it to blend out um, and kind of down the side of the beak that again will show more of the form to the beak so it doesn't look like it's just a single line at the top. And then I'll put a little bit um, down on this uh, little tip in through here. And if you want that more yellow kind of hue, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow and just give myself that additional bit of yellow kind of hue at the at the tip of it. Not necessary, but if you wanted to incorporate that, you certainly could. And then you just fiddle with it. And then once you've got it into a place that is uh, making your painterly eye happy, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the faces of our birds. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, my golden color, maybe some red, white, yellow, blue, <laughs> all of my colors. I'll let you know when I use them though. Um, I'm using my small brush. This is gonna include the eyes, some detail around the beaks, um, the mask that the male has on his face, and any other details I feel that are gonna be necessary in the face parts. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm gonna put the eyes in place. So uh, I'm gonna do the female eye first and this will just be kind of the base coat of it. So I'm gonna find a little bit higher than the halfway point on my beak, so maybe somewhere about here. I'm gonna go over to the left about, um, I would say an inch, half of an inch to an inch and I'm making myself a circle that's about I would say about a quarter to a half of an inch wide by a quarter to a half of an inch tall. And then I'm gonna utilize black and brown to put a little bit of a shaded area around her beak. So this will be the area that um, the fur, or, or the fur, fur feathers around the beak just kind of meet 
with the beak. So it could be um, shadowy type of area. It could be part of the colors of the feathers around the face. So just a little bit of darkness in through here. I'm going to pull it down towards the, um, the neck a little bit, picking up a little bit more brown right now. I'm really just kind of giving this a sketcherly type of um, brush stroke to get it to blend into the fur that's next to it. So just kind of little wiggles on my brush. I'm going to do a couple of little curved swipes down underneath her eye in through here and then maybe just rub it out in through here just so it gets to gradually kind of blend into that dark area that I put right next to the um, right next to the beak. I'll also put a little bit of darkness around the back side of her eye. So I just reloaded my brush with a little bit of um, black and brown. And again, not much, just I'm looking for just little nuances of dark feathers, maybe just sitting behind her, her eye a little bit. That's going to give her a little bit more character as we paint in um, the, the colors in her face. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to go do a similar exercise on um, the male's face. So reloading my brush with just black paint to put the eye in place. So again, about a third of the way down that beak and over to the right, I'm going to put myself a circle. This one could be exactly the same size as hers or maybe a little bit bigger if you wanted it to look like he was overall a little bit bigger. You could certainly do that. And then what I'm going to do is he has a mask of black feathers around his beak that kind of shoots out in um, behind the behind the eye. But I don't want to get confused between the eye and the mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just another little light kind of circle around where I want that eye to go. So this way I've got something that separates my my mask, which I'm going to paint kind of black right now from that eye. So I just reloaded my brush with a little bit more black. So I'm going to have this mask is going to be this entire kind of chest area. I'm going to come down maybe about an inch, inch and a half. I'm going to give you the barriers for it right now and then we'll paint it in. So I'm going to give these little wispy kind of um, brush strokes just with the tip of my brush in order to give myself a little bit of uh, entry into the red feathers. I'm going to do the same thing up coming underneath the eye, something like this, just really kind of wispy, going to bring it out to a little bit of a point back here, and then it comes back into the, the forehead somewhere in through here. So just little dots, dashes, polka dots to get the um, exterior outline on there. Then I'm going to reload my brush with black paint. I'm going to put some little um, fluffier kind of feathers along the edge in through here. So just a little bit of that um, black on my brush. You could even put a tiny bit of water on it if you wanted those little tips to be a little bit pointier. And then I'm going to color in this whole area that we just out outlined with these little painterly brush strokes that are going to look like little feathers. So if you can see a bit of that red underneath, that's perfect. It's going to make it look a little bit more natural, like it's got some texture to it and the red or the black feathers are intermingling a little bit with the red feathers or maybe they're shining and they've got a little bit of glow from the red feathers. Again, just this little bits of black paint is going to give me um, this mask type of area, putting a little bit more on this frontal part. And then again, doesn't have to be a solid color, just something that's going to represent these little feathers. So I'm just kind of tapping it in with um, the black paint on my brush, giving myself a little bit of a uh, outline around there. And then what I'm going to do while this is kind of settling, I'm going to go back and finish my, my female's um, facial features. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to work on her eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be picking up some of the her base her base fur color, so that golden um, tan color. I'm going to use this as the colored part of her eye. So I'm going to put a ring kind or a partial um, ring on this bottom left hand side of her eye, something like this, as if she's kind of looking up at her mate over there. Then I'm going to um, wipe or wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up some of my light blue that I had in the sky 
and I'm gonna put like a little reflection on the eye from the top right hand corner and just kind of pull this almost cross it over that original or the um, tan color now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint give myself a couple of little twinkles in the eye so wherever you want those twinkles to be is perfect and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little detail around her face so I'm gonna want a little bit of light feathers on the top of her little bit of red feathers back behind her eye and this just get it to blend in so I'm gonna use her base color plus white on my brush to give myself this little kind of highlighted area up at the top I picture the um, feathers on the face to be a little bit shorter and softer so this dotted type of technique will help to accomplish that um, and you can get that top to go as white as you want and if you don't get it as much as um, you want or as full as you want when we add the um, the final feathers onto the whole um, body we'll be able to add or modify any little bits that we feel are necessary I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red um, to intermingle a little bit up above this eye in through here so just a teeny tiny bit on my brush now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that um, tan color plus white just to get these to kind of intermingle a little bit and you don't really need to do much I'm really just kind of looking to put a little bit of detail um, on the head before I start introducing all of the other feathers um, within the rest of the within the rest of the bird so that's looking pretty good to me I think I'm gonna um, move on to my male bird maybe I've got a little bit of extra information up in through here yeah there we go just little little extra twinkles and stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and do his eye in a similar way I'm gonna pick up some of the tan color from her and I'm going to give this colored part on the bottom right hand side of the eye or on the right hand side of the eye leaving a little sliver of the black um, on the exterior so that way it looks like we've got a little bit of a little bit of detail in through there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to pick up some of that sky blue that light blue that we had I'm going to put a little crossover kind of reflection in through here so maybe something like that and then I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint and give a little tiny sparkle in through there and if you feel like you did it too much like I feel like that blue is a little bit too much I've just picked up a tiny bit of black to dull it down just a little bit so you can certainly tweak yours as much as you want no pun intended but a little pun intended <laughs> Sorry, my head has fun on its own all sometimes. So um, you can certainly do as much modification on that as you feel fit. And then I'm going to put a little bit of information around the edges of his. So I'm going to go with her colors. So that tan plus a little bit of white just to give myself a little bit of um, feathers around the eyes. Maybe we've got some little lightness in the front part of um, his forehead in through here so again I'm just going with that tan plus a little bit of white and it's just acting as a nice highlight color you could go with the gray that we had done for um, the background as well so whatever you feel works for you maybe a couple of these on these on these little feathers in through here and then I would just kind of fiddle with it as much as I want maybe get rid of a little bit of this black or the the red in through here so it's not so so red and maybe just replace it with some of that tan color and then once you've got it where you are comfortable with it just fiddle with it as much as you want we are going to be utilizing our um we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can uh, put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do our shadowy or dark areas on our birds. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. This, I'm gonna be using brown and black and then the base coat for each of the birds. So red here and then that tan color for here. So the idea here is I want them to look like they're kind of behind these flowers and they've got a little bit of dimension so I'll be making the, the bottoms dark. I'll also be putting maybe a little bit of shadow back here on the back side of this cardinal, a little bit in, up in the head 
Um, and then on her, I'll probably put some little shadowy areas up in her crown also. Um, maybe a little bit more behind her eye and then some down below and maybe underneath these little wings. So I'm using my medium brush and I'm never going to have a lot of paint on my brush at any one time. I'm going to be doing a lot of little rubbing type of techniques, but I also am going to have it blending in with the um, original color and I want it to look like feathers too. So I'll be using a lot of kind of rubbing and little um, mark making for the feathers, but I'll ne I won't be using straight lines. They're all going to have curves to them. So I'm going to start with her first. I'm going to start with a tiny bit of brown and a, just a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush. I'm going to get down in through here. It's okay if you bump into your flowers along the way because we have one more step to the flowers that will um, bring them to be finished. So I think I need more paint than that so we can actually see it. So I'm going to kind of get this brown paint in through here. I think I do, I need a tiny bit more black paint. I really want it to look like it's in the shadows. So just kind of scooting it in between these little um, flower petals in through here. And then I'm going to make sure that I bring it up and it blends in with that original tan color. I can also put a little bit of it underneath these um, these little wings over on the sides. If you had some, great. If you didn't incorporate that, that's okay too. And then now that I've got it kind of on there, I'm going to start picking up the original uh, tan color just to make sure, and a, maybe a little bit of brown, just to make sure that they cross over and intermingle with each other in a nice natural way. So I've got tan plus the original, or tan plus brown on my brush right now and just making sure that I've got these little pieces of, of feathers that are intermingling well with one another. And you can bring it up as high as you want. If you like that brown, uh, the dark brown, you can certainly bring it up a little bit higher if you want to. And then I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm going to put a little bit of this underneath the chin. So I had just a little bit of that um, darker brown still left on my brush. Maybe just rub in a little bit back here so I can see the contour of her of her head. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the uh, the dark brown. I feel that I want a little bit more behind this eye in through here, something like that. And then I'm picking up some brown plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint. I want a couple of darker pieces within this crown. I'm also adding a tiny bit of water to my brush so I can get these little individual pieces in through here. And if you do this and you go, it goes too much on you, when we do the little highlighted pieces, you'll be able to counteract it. So don't feel that um, if it goes too dark on you that it's, it's too late because you'll be able to add more. I'm adding a little bit more above here. I like the darkness. <laughs> I like the darkness because it shows dimension. So I just like add it wherever I want. I can always get it to be lighter with my highlights, but that's looking pretty good to me right now. So I'm just going to make sure that this blends in. Just picked up a little bit more of that base uh, tan, the original tan, and just making sure everything talks well together. Again, we'll be doing the highlights, so that'll take care of that midsection. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to go over to my male cardinal right now, and I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom. I'm going to be using my base coat and I'll use black and brown to get the shadow in and then I'll get it to blend in. I'm going to do a shadow over here to show that it kind of dips in a little bit and then some up in the hair, uh, uh, the crown, <laughs> Sorry, the hair. Sometimes my, my, my animals and lively things, the, the fur and the hair gets confused. <laughs> so uh, black and brown is what I started with on my brush. Just going to get this little um, darkness into these crevices in through here and I don't necessarily want to just follow along these petals so if you have a tall petal you might not have shadow around it so I just if you kind of think of the the circle of the bird as opposed to the petals that'll help you to get a better placement for the shadow so it looks a little bit more natural as opposed to just painting it around each one of these um, petals. So I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the contour of the, um, the bird's body, not 
the petal itself. I'm picking up red paint on my dirty brush right now to get these to um, blend in with one another. And again, just kind of using that painterly brush stroke to make it look like it's, it's some feathers that are just kind of going into the darkness um, of the body, you know, the contour of the body. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more black and brown to get this back side of the head or the, um, the neck area. I need to wash my brush. I had a little bit too much on there. So just washed it and dried it so I can control the quantity and then just making sure I've got that little bit of a darkness. Now I want more. <laughs> It's always, it's safer to, to, you know, take away or, you know, go slowly into the, into the dark process because it's easier to add than it is to take away. So I um, just picked up a little bit more now and just making sure that I've got it in the darkness that I want, making sure that it kind of blends in with this red paint. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of red right now just to make sure that I've got all of this talking well together. And again, I'm just kind of using this that like this curved dash type of motion. I'm going to put a little bit up in that crown, so a touch of um, black and brown on my brush. And again, if you want the little strands, just add a tiny bit of water or liquid medium to your brush. And I want these to kind of be curved. And I'm just going to put these little bits here and there in here so it looks like they too have some dimension to them. I don't want it to go too far down that head so just a little bit in through here and on the back side and again if you do too much wipe it away with your paint, your hand or paint later on and then I'm thinking that that's pretty good so I'm going to call it on my shadows. I'll be using my large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done you can Put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the feathers on the birds. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush, but you could certainly use your medium brush. It's gonna be a similar process to what we did the last step, but I'm gonna use this brush because I'm gonna, I, it's a larger area, and for me, I like to, um, I, I like the control I get off of these bristle brushes. So I'm going to be on the female. She's going to have some lighter area in through here, along her face, maybe on this back side a bit. I'll put some additional little pieces on her head. And then for the male, he's going to be nice and bright in through here, maybe a little bit on his cheek and up in through here. So I'm going to be using this bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are the same as... Um, we've used all along so I'm going to have my tan, white, um, I'm also going to use my light yellow that I used for the sky for the female and then on the male I'll be using red, white, and that light red that we used on the sky as well and any other colors I'll let you know if I use them. So on her I'm going to start with my tan plus that light yellow that we used on the sky. And I don't need much, just a teeny tiny bit on my brush. This is going to help start the process of where I want the lighter feathers to go. And I'm really just using the corner of my brush, making sure that I, I'm almost like tapping it into the canvas and bringing it down into the direction that I feel that 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 those feathers would be falling from, from the body. And then just making sure that it really speaks well with the, with the rest of the area. So just, I have hardly any paint on my brush right now. That was the lightest area that I wanted. I'll put a little bit more white on that area in a bit, but this is just kind of setting the stage to how I want the, the highlighted areas to, to be laid out. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more on my brush. So tan plus that light, yellow and this is going to be maybe back in through here i'm going to have a little bit definitely on this this cheeky area so just making sure that it on the face it's more of um i i, I picture them to be shorter type of feathers so you can get away with more of like a dot type of a technique as opposed to a pulling or a brush stroke itself so again just something that steers my eye into the direction of those into those feathers and then along here maybe I'll put a little bit coming up in through this area as well I'm going to pick up some of that 
uh, yellow plus the tan. Again, just to get some little stripes coming on in, in through here. And I like to build to the light slowly so I don't have it just one solid color. I wanna be able to see the nuances of all of the colors that we put on there previously so it adds a lot of dimension to it so that's why I don't use a lot of paint on my brush and I just kind of build my way to the lightness so you'll so it adds a lot of dimension into it so now I'm going to pick up some of that yellow without washing my brush just a teeny bit of that yellow the light yellow plus white on my brush so this is going to help me to establish the brightest of the bright areas and again I don't need a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just going to kind of start tapping in these lighter areas that I want definitely over here on this chest to make this look like it's really hitting the sunshine and making sure that it's got the the, the direction of the um, of the feathers that I'm looking for and making sure that I tap it in as much as I want it to, to be tapped in. As I'm coming over towards this left hand side, I'm gonna, I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'll start picking up some of that yellow and tan when I feel I need to, um, need to introduce it to that area. But right now, just kind of getting that lightness on there. I'm gonna pick up some more yellow and white to um, get this backside of the head in through here and then again just kind of pulling it in the direction that I want those little pieces of feathers to to be at if I want this kind of top of this area to be a little bit more prominent and poke out a little bit more then I'll put a little bit more lightness in through there definitely some more lightness on this little cheek in through here so it looks nice and full and it's got lots of um, you know fluffy feathers on it and then just kind of Maybe bringing this up just a little bit more. I definitely want a little bit more lightness on the head. So white plus a tiny bit of the yellow on my brush and just kind of tapping in the corner of my brush just to make sure that I've got enough of this lightness up and through here. I felt like that needed to be just a little bit lighter than I had it and maybe just a little bit up on here as well. I'm gonna pull, I think, a little bit more of that yellow onto my brush because I think I want a little bit more sunshine on some of these pieces of um, feathers so I just picked up a little bit more yellow. I might even pick up a little bit more red too to um, put behind this eye and maybe a little bit more up in this crown because I like that red too so I'm just gonna play with this here for a minute adding a little bit more yellow onto my brush just to get this chest to be a little bit more vibrant too. Maybe a little swipe down the edge of these, um, these wings out in through there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to, um, I think I am going to put a little bit more red in that face, maybe even a little bit in, in the crown. I'm actually gonna switch brushes. <laughs> I'm going to put my, I'm going to pick up my uh, medium brush because I want smaller pieces um, and I don't want my, my large brush to get out of control. So I just picked up my medium brush. I'm putting a little bit more red up into this crown. I think it looks really pretty, the color contrast against her, um, against her regular feathers. So it's just, it makes me happy <laughs> to put this little bit of red in through here. So we're just, we're going for it. We're making just a little bit more red and vibrancy in through here. Maybe a touch down underneath her chin in through here. They can have a little bit of red all over them, these, these female um, birds. So you can certainly explore however much that you would like to put on. So I just picked up a tiny bit of brown paint too. And if you want to do any little, you know, additional fiddling with it, feel free to do so. But she's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna head on over to uh, the male bird. Maybe just a little bit more fluffiness on her chest and her cheeks. It's hard to stop, so I apologize. <laughs> I, it's so funny because I know that I wanna stop, but I really can't because, you know, I just like the fluff. So a little bit more fluff here and there is totally fine. And then I'm gonna um, move on to him. So I am gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna have some lightness on his chest, his cheek, and his um, upper region of his head. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm actually gonna pick up some of that, um, the light red that we created from the background. 
and start my highlights with this color. So I know that I definitely want some in through here. And again, you don't need a lot on your brush. Just kind of tap it in where you want that those highlighted areas to go. His chest just grew a little bit on me, but that's okay. <laughs> and then just making sure that it kind of fades out into, um, into where I want the darker area to be. So I'll fade it out into, into the red region. So just kind of running out of paint in through here and just letting it kind of fade out into there. Gonna give them a little bit in the, in the cheek area up in through here. So I haven't washed my brush. I'm just utilizing the, the little bits of remnants on my brush to get this, um, to get this area in through here and to get it to look like he's got a little bit of dimension and, uh, kind of width or um, form to, to the cheeks and to the body and stuff. I, I'll put a little bit up here in the head. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more on my brush just so I can get this to be a little bit lighter in through here. And again, I don't wanna color the whole thing, so I'm just kind of doing these little quick strokes in through here. Gonna put a little bit on the top of his head like this so we can get those that information that it's being illuminated and then I'm going to add, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of red paint to my brush right now, just so I can make sure that this um, blends in over here. So I didn't wash my brush, just picked up a bit of red paint so I can get these to just gradually blend in together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and yellow. I don't know if I said that I was gonna use some yellow on this guy, but I'm using, I did not wash my brush, teeny bit of white and a tiny bit of my deep yellow. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't necessarily want it to turn too pink on me. Um, with the white and the red, you run the risk of it being a little extra pink. So the, um, with the yellow will help to counteract that. So I have my light, red, white, and a touch of yellow on my brush right now. And I'm just gonna kind of work on where I want those brightest of the bright highlights to go. So somewhere in through here. And you might find that, you know, you don't feel that you need that yellow on your brush, but again, just teeny tiny bits can, can help to um, counteract perhaps a little extra pinkness that might happen in your bird. And then of course I'll do a little tiny bit uh, on this head as well. And then once you've got all of your little highlights in, you fiddle with it as much as you want, make any little adjustments, and then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So you can just take this large brush, put it away wherever you'd like to, get out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are white, light red. We'll make a, another shade of red. <laughs> um, and I think that's about it. What I'm gonna in essence do is I'm gonna do some out of focus ones in the atmosphere or behind our birds and on the ground. So it will tie these two flowers into the rest. I'm gonna do that first because I'm gonna save the these for last so I I can clean up my edges and if I wanna if I accidentally bump one of these out of focus ones into these, you know, the front flowers, we can correct it by our final layer on that. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna pick up some of my light red and white, and I'm really just gonna be doing some really out of focus um, impressionistic type of brush strokes to uh, give the representational idea that these flowers, that there's a lot of these flowers in the background and they're out of focus. So I'm gonna take a touch of my light red, I don't need a lot, and a touch of white, and I'm actually gonna just wipe it off on my paper towel. You can also, if when you start this process, if it goes too much for you, you can always dip your brush a little bit in water and then tap it off on your paper towel. That's gonna ensure that you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. It will be a very transparent and it'll make it look like it's nice and out of focus. So I'm just gonna kind of start over here on the left-hand side, giving myself these, what would kind of look like ends of, of the petals. I just put a little bit more white on my brush and I'm just in my head thinking, what would the, the tips of these flowers look like, like I'm just adding some of these 
colors off in the distance. Maybe we've got a couple in through here. Maybe just rub little bits in between these um, flowers down in through here. Maybe I pick up a little bit more of the red, the light red and white as I'm going up in through here. Again, I really just wanted to look out of focus. So the less I do, the better. The less paint I have on my brush, the more realistic it's gonna look, the more out of focus it's gonna appear. And again, I don't really need to do much. I just kind of carrying those colors up into this background, maybe a little bit more white so it looks like I've got the tips of some of these flowers off in in the distance and just changing up the direction of them. I know that the flowers kind of are, you know, in a full way, maybe just kind of rubbing this in and through here. And then just same thing in through here, just kind of incorporating some of this real soft out of focus colors, which are these plus a little bit of water on my brush, maybe just giving myself the appearance of maybe a couple oops, almost just lost my brush there, of a couple of um, of the ends of the petals. So maybe a little bit more white here and there. And then just as I'm kind of fading back further into the canvas, just giving these really, I'm almost just wiggling my brush, but I am thinking that these petals are big and kind of come up a little bit. So that's where my head is being steered. And then maybe I have another one kind of off in the distance over in through here. And then just maybe a touch of, um, a touch more white on a couple of the exterior edges of the petals. And then just giving the insinuation that maybe there's a couple off in the distance. And again, nothing major, maybe picking up a little bit more of that um, light red to fill in some of these gaps down here. And then once I've got enough that makes me happy on that um, piece, I'm going to um, finish these flowers in the front. But of course, I'm not satisfied with these yet, so <laughs> I'm just gonna add a little bit more here and there. All right, well, that, that's good, right into there. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little bit darker of a um, center color. So I'm gonna take that light red and add a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit more red to it. So this is going to make it kind of deeper, darker, and a little bit more on the purpley side. I'm gonna utilize a touch of this inside some of these little um, crevices. So just a teeny tiny bit of that little bit darker um, shade of the of the um, pink, we'll call it, to give myself a little bit more information in inside here. And I don't need to do it to all of them. And you might find that you want yours to be darker or lighter. I'm just kind of putting a touch of it in through there. And then you can even just kind of fade it up if you want. But this is gonna give you that little deep, dark, shadowy area in between um, those petals that kind of tells the story of them really going, um, coming out from that, that dark center. While I have this color on my brush, I'm just gonna kind of add it in through here, just making sure I've got it represented on a few of the flowers. And again, doesn't have to be much, just kind of giving that, that deep darkness um, in through some of them. And again, just putting a little bit in that center and just kind of pulling it up. So now that I've got that deeper shade in there, now I'm just gonna um, go ahead and finish these petals. In essence, I'm gonna be doing a second layer on them, um, similar to the first layer with the white being more represented on the edges and that um, uh, the light red being represented in the middle. So I just dipped my brush in white paint. I washed and dried it and I put some white paint on it. So I'm gonna really just kind of start with my white, getting my edges nice and um, as colored in as I want and letting this white just kind of overlap and fade into the rest of that petal. So this is the time where I would make sure that I've got all of my edges as clean as I want them to be. Um, you could certainly utilize both of the colors, the white plus that, um, that light red at the same time on your brush if you wanted to. But I'm gonna start with just the white so this way I can get it to fade in and um, with 
the base color. So, uh, so that way I won't have too much trouble blending um, it. I just kind of let it, I put it heavy in one area and then just pull it over the, um, the other section of that petal. And this way, again, it allows me to just always have the white on my brush, utilizing it as my as my bright color and then just getting it to overlap and fade down into the other colors on that petal. So again, you could certainly utilize both the white and the light red. I probably will use the light red in a minute, but right now just this is helping me to clean up my edges, get a nice coat within the, um, the petal so I feel like it is fully rendered and then I may utilize that um, the light red to add any additional information that I want. You can also utilize the white to give um, information of how the petal is bending and what part is seeing the, um, the light the most. These petals do have a lot of um, uh, white in them so it may not tell as much story as you want to but if you want a part of a petal to pop out like I'll show you on this one what I'm talking about but if I want an area to um, look like it is has a little bit more contour to it and has a little bit more shape I could put my lightest area instead of on the edge I could put it down a little bit um, in that petal and that'll allow it to look like it's almost bent out a little bit and has a little bit more form or shape to it as opposed to just putting the white at the edge of the um, at the edge of the petal but I do want to make sure that I get all the petals um, painted out to my chalk mark so this is that step that I'm doing that as well and then again I, on this side I'm just adding white paint to my brush to get the, um, the, the petals finished being painted and making sure that I've got all the information on them that I want. So the white paint is just allowing me to clean up those edges, allowing me to pull that light color into the, um, into the base pinkish type of color that we had. But again, bringing it right to those edges is allowing me to make these petals look like they're finished and that they are in fact in front of my birds as opposed to um, my birds feathers being in front of them. So this is definitely a step where you get to utilize um, cleaning up your edges to to benefit the, the, the fully rendered um, petals. And if you get to a point where, like I feel like I made this one too white, I am picking up some of my um, light red to get that to blend in. I had a little bit too much white on my on my brush and instead of releasing it from my brush I just painted it in and then just picked up some of that light red so now I'm gonna move to my next one with just adding a little bit of white getting this to blend in and you might find that you never need to use pick up any more of that original light red if you find that you go through this process and everything just looks pretty the way that you want it to then you're done but if you feel like you want to do any additional blending to it then you definitely pick up some of that original um, light red and get all of those edges to to talk to one another and blend into one another and then once you feel like you've got it what I like to do is just kind of step away from it let it dry for a minute look at it from a distance see if there's any more additional tweaks that I may want to do and then if I do then I come back I'll add either that um, that light pink or the or the light red I should say or the white or what it, or even maybe some of that dark um, color that we created so wherever your visual preference is you take these flower petals into that place and then once you've got them all nice and done we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So I don't feel like I really need much with that medium or that light red, but if you felt you did, just pick a little bit of it up and just get those colors to blend in as much as you want and then do any of your little tweaks. Uh, you can put this medium brush away when you're done. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going with my small brush. I think I'm gonna go bottom left and I'm using white paint. So I like to sign my um, paintings with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or your date or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself some beautiful blossoming birds and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.